What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna talk about gargoyle geckos. We're gonna show off a bunch of new groups of gargoyle geckos. So 2020 is gonna be a big year. 10 plus groups of gargoyle geckos being paired together and you guys are gonna see every single one of them. So most people like to pair their gargoyle geckos in the springtime. We here at Tiki's Geckos like to pair them up in the winter time. There's a few reasons for that, but the main one being is because their metabolism is a lot slower during this time. When the temperatures go down, animals' metabolism slows down, which leads to a lot higher success rate, being because they're a lot less likely to be aggressive towards each other, whether it's dominant, whether it's territorial. Since they're slower, there's just less chance of them being aggressive to each other, which leads to better luck when pairing them up. Another good thing you should do before pairing up your gargoyle geckos is make sure they are on a full belly. It's really important you don't want them to be, like I was mentioning before, aggressive to each other or hungry. And also it's very important to put them in a neutral cage. This means a cage that either neither animal has been in or is cleaned up for all the cork bark, all the substrate, because you don't want the scent to be on one of the gargoyle geckos and then it acts very defensive and territorial against the other doing a harm and potentially even killing it. Gargoyles in particular can be a little bit rougher than say a crested gecko when it comes to breeding but pairing them in the cooler months, pairing them with food, making sure they always have food feeding two or three times a week, I found that it greatly reduces the risk of you know the gargoyles beating each other up or them ripping each other's tails off. Now when we're pairing up gargoyle geckos, the main thing I look for is, um, so depends on what I'm like, depends what kind of trait I want to bring out in, the, in, in an animal, that's how I will pair them. So for example, just to make it very basic, if I am looking for animals to, if I want to produce animals with a thick lateral stripe to make the six red stripe uh, gargoyle geckos or what some people call the super stripes, I will pair animals that have high intensity red along their back along their sides and I own, I tend to only pair striped animals together to keep that pattern and that color very clean. If you want some more like crazier pattern or blotched animals that are not just blotched but they're also striped then you would pair like a high red red stripe to a like high red blotched and that way you're gonna get a lot of the red stripes down the back but you will also get splatters of color all around the, uh, around the body. Um, another thing that you could look out for is if you want like um, higher horns, look for the animals that have the highest horns in your collection and pair them together or the biggest animals pair those together. So the, the pairing of the geckos is just going to come down to what you want to bring out in the offspring and also um, sometimes I like to just put random animals together just to see if anything weird or cool pops out. But for the most part, I'm going to be looking to pair up animals that are high red with each other. If they're black and white, I try to get, you know, the cleanest black and white animals together. And in the following next clips, I'm going to show you with our group so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm trying to do. I'll also talk about it and you guys will see what our next, you know, our 2020 breeding groups for gargoyle geckos look like, at least the new groups and you can kind of get an idea and also so you can get excited for what's to come. Right before we show you these cargo gecko groups, we wanted to talk to you guys about our Christmas sale. It's the best, it's, ugh. It's well, a wonderful time of the yeah, year. Yeah, I was gonna say that, but I don't know why. I was gonna see the best sale, but it's not true because it's Black Friday. Our holiday sale is back. It's gonna be 25% off every single animal in the inventory. And if you're subscribed to our email list, you're gonna get first dibs. Starting from Monday of next week to Friday, the day after Christmas. Christmas is Thursday, right? Christmas is Wednesday. So there you go. You got two extra days <laughs> if you want to get something. But keep in mind that certain parts of the country are too cold to ship. So if you make a purchase and it's too cold in your area, we can hold your shipment you know um, up until the weather is better but don't expect you know remember these are animals so we can't just ship anywhere we want anytime we want so keep in mind and if you don't want to wait then don't place an order and so Christmas sale holiday sale starts the 23rd be ready and like I said those of you who are subscribed to the email list will be able to purchase 
and get these sales two days in advance. And if you're not on the email list and you want to be, what do you got to do? You go to the website, go to all the way to the bottom. If the pop-up doesn't come up, go to the bottom, it says subscribe to our email newsletter. Put your email in there, make sure you type it right, and there you go. You'll get the email. So this first pair I put together basically for the red coloration. The female here has a bunch of wild, um, you know, a lot of red blotching on the sides and on the, and on the back. And I just wanted to make something a little bit different than the regular red stripes. A little bit more messy red stripes. I think they look really cool. I have plenty of groups that make perfect red stripes. So I wanted to pair these two up and have them be a little bit, you know, have the red maybe go outside more of the red stripes and be on the bottom of the belly, on the side of the face, just to make it look a little bit different than my usual red stripes. This is a female on the bottom and this is Inferno, one of our males that has some really nice lateral sides as you can see and they have some great red on them so this next group i chose to put together for their neon red coloration as you can see they're super duper bright i'm not sure if the camera is picking up on their colors like they should be but these two geckos in particular the male is super bright red and they're more of classic red stripes but i thought you know this is like our bread and butter. Red striped gargoyle geckos never get old. I can never get tired of looking at these things. So I thought, you know, this is a perfect um, new bloodline pair that I, n neither of these animals are related to anything in my collection. So I was really excited to put these two together and just expand on our bloodlines. All right, so this right here is my biggest pair of gargoyle geckos, both weighing in around 75 grams. This guy here is a yellow base reticulated and the female here is just a banded reticulated. They're absolutely gorgeous, super big. They both have really nice blue eyes and I'm looking forward to breeding them and making some giant gargoyle geckos. I want you, I want you guys to see how big these are if they don't run away. But look at that absolutely monsters so this next group is a group of blotched gargoyle geckos we have an orange blotched male here that I produced and these two females we also produced here at Tiki's geckos now these guys are some of my favorites the blotched are super underrated they when they fire up they have a lot of red in their base color kinda like this female right here and that one you can see is a dip, uh, deeper red in the blotches and the male which is more of an orange coloration but when he's fired up he has a bunch of reticulation across the body and just looks really awesome. So this group here I put together to make some of the best looking black and white or just general looking striped animals in the market as you can see there are some stunners here like that female in the back she's more of like a yellowish coloration and they're all going crazy right now but um, this is more of like a black and white I got the female that just jumped on my jeans and they're all going all over the place they're not staying in the box like we intended them to but get a good look at this girl. She's absolutely beautiful. Nice blue eyes, yellow rim around the eyes. The stripe follows all the way down to the tail, just like I like it. And so does that male. He has the nice blue eyes, yellow rim around the tail. I'm sorry, around the eye. The black thick striping down the back all the way to the tail base and to the tail. And these females are not bad either so this group was just mainly to make some high-end looking black and white or just striped gargoyle geckos so this group I'm really really excited about this male right here was produced by us from Dracula and Bloody Mary and he has some crazy looking lateral stripes and some yellow background um, just an all-around perfect looking gargoyle gecko and then I have them paired up to two different red stripe females one has perfect red stripes down the back 
and the other one has broken red stripes and red blotches along her sides and her back but these females are high quality they're from good lines so we're we're really excited to just start to throw all these Dracula line stuff to all different kinds of geckos and produce some killer animals for you guys. So this is another group of reticulated blotched gargoyle geckos and this male that I'm showing you guys right now is actually from the original Rapashi stock. He is really old. I don't know how exactly how old he is, but I know he is over nine years old. And these are the females I got for him. This one is a reticulated, kind of like a pastel kind of coloration. Not much blotches on her, but still very, very pretty. And these two females here are red blotched and orange blotched geckos that we produced right here. This one, not that much coloration on her again. And, but this one is just absolutely killer bunch of red on her face on her back and that is what I would consider a super blotched all right so this group right here is some of the funky gargoyle geckos we have the male is a mosaic so you can see he has some weird patterns going on it almost looks like in between of a striped and a banded reticulated and then we have some pastel uh, reticulated right there a pastel striped and then this really really nice pastel right here which is one of my favorites she is absolutely crazy looking I wish you guys could really see the colors but she looks almost purple the male is one of my favorites though he has some crazy patterning going on and I'm glad he actually fired up for the video because when he's not fired up doesn't look like much but really really cool different kind of patterns so we're we're looking to produce some different looking gargoyle geckos and you know always good to have some variety but basically the pastel gargoyles are going to be kind of like a faded um it looks like a, almost like a faded pinkish or purplish pattern and there's not many of them around so i gathered a little group so hopefully we'll get some babies this is one of my favorite groups for 2020. This male is from Lily Exotics. He is one of the craziest looking animals I have. Super striped or six striped orange. Um, and the female here is from Rackhouse. She has some really, really bright red and she has splotches of red along her laterals. So I'm looking forward to producing animals that have a lot of color on their laterals and of course in their back. So I saved this group for last because this is one of the ones that I'm really really excited about. This male right here, that's as dark as he will get. That's as dark stripes that he will get. He actually gets really really white, almost paper white. And he, when he fires up he looks like this with almost like a little bit of a yellow base and some gray, grayish striping. But for the most part he is always white. Now, I think that this is a hypo animal. I'm gonna try to prove that out, but I'm almost positive it is because of, you know, how he looks and he, the fact that he's never had any dark pigment on him. And I paired him up to a wide variety of different looking geckos. Um, I paired it up to an orange striped female right here that is one of our proven breeders. This girl is really light as well. She's a striped, almost like a yellow base, but super, super light. This female just had some really nice red stripes, outer red stripes that I wanted to, you know, focus on breeding because he does have some outer orange stripes. So it'd be cool to make some hypo animals with some outer uh, colored stripes. And then that female in the back, probably my favorite female of the group. Absolutely crazy. Great contrast with her bright orange markings. She has lateral markings on the side. She got that face um coloration going on there and that bright orange in the back and this group is really diverse when it comes to bloodlines all these animals come from way different bloodlines so looking forward to you know seeing what pops out and having this fun new gargle gecko project 
he is a little bit of a spaz, but he is absolutely beautiful. You can see him right there next to the female. And he is what I am looking forward the most in this next Gargo Gecko breeding season. All right, so a lot of people ask us how do we set up our Gargo Gecko in breeding group enclosures. Now, we use these tubs. These are 66 quart tubs for about four geckos. So it just depends on how many geckos you're gonna keep. But the important thing about these tubs is that you wanna use as much space as possible. So if you just have like two pieces of two sticks in there, it's not gonna be utilizing the whole volume of the enclosure, right? So what we do is we create a lot of visual barriers so the geckos can kind of hide from each other if they feel like they want to. If they're always in contact with each other and they can't get away from each other, they're more likely to fight. So we have cork bark because they do love cork bark. Um, they just cling to it very well. They like hiding inside of it. We have, we buy these uh, big ferns from the store. It's great because it creates a bunch of different layers that they can hide in and climb around in and we put that in there. Now, depending on how many females are in the enclosure, you could add two, one or two lay boxes. So for this enclosure, we have uh, four females, I'm sorry, three females in this one. So we did add two different lay boxes. This one, we have four females and we also have two um, lay boxes in there. Now for the substrate, for this one, we're using uh, cypress mulch. Well, this is not cypress mulch, this is called Coconut husk? Yeah. All right, so this is coconut husk. You could use coconut husk, you could use cypress mulch. Um, you just don't want something, you could use paper towels, newspaper. Um, now you don't want something that's gonna stay too humid. Like I wouldn't put soil here because it's just gonna be a pain in the butt trying to find the eggs. Um, they're gonna be less likely to lay them in the lay box. They're just gonna lay them wherever they want. This is kind of dry. It, it holds humidity pretty well, but it's it's still not humid enough for them to want to lay their eggs in. Although you do get some geckos that will just lay their eggs even in the dry substrate. Uh, so that's the substrate. Like I said, we use, like for this enclosure, we have the fern, like I showed you, and then we have two layers of cork bark. This one here where all these gargles are hanging out. And then the bottom one here, as you can see, there's some fake plants in there, two lay boxes, and then we just put it in there. Now, when we're, when we're setting up these gargle gecko groups, especially when there's more than like three animals, you wanna make sure you give them at least like two different feeding spots because gargle geckos in particular can be a little bit rougher with each other. So you don't want one to start falling behind and getting bullied. Um, so I definitely recommend setting them up with two different feeding spots at a water bowl for sure. Before, I used to say, you know, you don't need a water bowl and you really don't, but it doesn't hurt to have it in there. And what I found out when we moved to HQ is that it was different. The humidity level was different than it was in my, in the garage back in my parents' house. So I had to change a couple things around. And that's why it's really important to kind of understand the animal so you could kind of, you know, go based, go off based on that so because some places you know in Arizona might be drier than in California or whatever so just make sure that you know you kind of understand the animals as long as they have their basic requirements met you're gonna keep them exactly like you keep your normal gargoyle gecko you know same temperatures same food same humidity as long as they're kept with their basic husbandry correctly they're gonna breed so yeah basically same food same water same everything pair them up in the in the cooler months and just keep an eye on them especially at first in the first couple days first couple weeks make sure you're keeping an eye on them eye on them because sometimes some will bully the smaller like bigger gargoyles they're known to bully smaller gargoyles some signs that you want to see for bullying is if an animal has like shedding issues or what well, you know if your humidity is perfect, if your humidity is right and you've never had shedding issues before and then you put them together and then one of the animals has shedding issues, if their tail is a little bit wiggly, then make sure, then they might be getting bullied. If obviously they have a lot of bite scars, open wounds, if they're biting each other, it's normal. That's how gargoyle geckos are. That's how lizard breeding is. But it shouldn't really be opening any wounds where it's bleeding. And for the most part, males are going to be the ones that are mounting and, and, and biting the females. Although some females are very territorial and will bite back, it's normal. Trust me, it's kind of aggressive, but um, 
As long as you don't see any blood, you should be good. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little bit hard to manage all the gargoyle geckos while we were filming, but we got it done. And make, if you like our content, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button down below. And make sure you follow us on all of our other social media platforms. We have a, we have a lot of diff. We're on everything like TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Notice Facebook. Notice how before we used to say TikTok at the end. Now we say it in the beginning because TikTok is so damn addicting. And it's taking over his life. So make sure you follow us on all that stuff. And till next time, guys. We'll see you next week. Christmas sale next week. Sign up to the email newsletter. 25% off everything oh and we got some cool new jackson chameleons in rainbow jacksons all kinds of cool helmeted stuff. chameleons fishers chameleons that's why i want a chameleon shirt because we got so many chameleons right now see you guys next week